Hi everybody, this is the Sunday night of the Monaco Grand Prix where we finished first and third and a race that was really epic and uh, worthy of remem remembering Niki. Over the seven years that we have been on the journey together we had so many wonderful memories together. Today we want to tell you some of the stories of our Niki, not only the chairman Niki Lauda but also our friend. Some stories are sad, some stories are funny, but they paint a true picture how much we will miss our dear friend. Hello, I'm Steffi. I used to work for catering. Now I'm working for the hospitality team. Working catering for two years got me quite close to Nicky because he was obviously in the motorhome every day. I was serving him his coffee and doing anything he, he asked us to do. He was one of the funniest, charming, people that I've met. Every day he came into the motorhome asking Steffi what's up, tell me all the gossip you have. <laughs> he was every, every, every day, almost every day, he asked us to turn up the AC even though it was burning hot inside. We said of course we'll turn the AC up to 25 degrees Nikki, just for you because you could, he was just one of the people you couldn't say no to. And Whenever he asked us to play his songs from George Ezra, we did so, because again, we could never say no to him. And he will be truly missed. My name's Nathan Divey. I'm uh, Lewis Hamilton's number one mechanic. I suppose my, my best memories of Nicky will be uh, in races, I get quite nervous towards the end, especially if we're uh, looking like we're gonna have a good result. And I, uh, prone to chewing my nails at times and uh, in the last few laps if Nicky saw me doing that he'd always walk up and slap the back of my hand like a disapproving father and tell me don't worry he knows what he's doing just trust him. Nicky will be uh, be deeply missed he was a he was a, a, a good influence across a great influence across the team for all of the uh, all of the mechanics downstairs he was always he always felt like a he had a good calming influence across us especially uh, in races where things were a bit tight, it was always good to know he was there. This picture shows Nikki, a version of Nikki's FAA Gala 2016. Um, my name is Julia and I'm Toto's assistant and I have been in Vienna to look after the drivers and Toto and everyone who was attending the gala. So Toto was attending, was sitting at the table for like three, three hours normally and meanwhile we actually didn't didn't have seats because the place there was really small and George, Paul, Paul and myself um, FaceTimed Nicky because he doesn't like galas, he's very impatient and yeah he said uh, come around and have a drink with me and we were like yeah why not let's go there <laughs> so I spoke to Attila he's the owner of Don Co I said, Attila, we're going to Nicky's place, we need some champagne. So he gave us like three liters of champagne. We took the S class, we went to Nicky's place and we had a really nice evening with some wine, bread, butter and, and he showed us also his house where he was sitting on, a, on that playing table, children's playing table and you could also see in the house all the children's stuff and that he really appreciates his children and he spoke a lot about them as well and yeah this was his version of the gala 2016 and it was actually one of the funniest evenings and best evenings ahead working with F1 and also Toto was really jealous that we sat on Nicky's sofa with a glass of wine while he had to sit for three hours at the gala so my name is Bradley Lord, I'm the communications director for the team and my strongest memories of Nicky will always be um, not the straightforward guy, not the blunt guy, not the direct one, but the warm-hearted, laughing man and my strongest memory of Nicky's laughter 
came just before the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2014. Um, we'd all been out on a cycling trip along the banks of the Danube and um, being F1 people, a group of very good cyclists had disappeared off into the distance and um, the group of less skilled cyclists decided, right, what we're gonna do is race them. So we'd stopped, had an espresso, full Tour de France style, and then we started racing, turned around, and we're trying to race like a Tour de France peloton. Obviously, our ambition massively outweighed our skill. Um, somebody clipped a wheel, everybody went down, apart from me, did very, very well. However, not cycling very often, I forgot I was clipped in. So I then had a choice as I realized I wasn't gonna get unclipped and couldn't get my feet out of the pedals. I was either gonna fall on the team or towards the river. So I opted for the river um, out of charity and started sliding towards the Danube with a bicycle attached to my feet. Fortunately, a tree stopped my passage and so hit me in the face. And as I sat back up after this incident, um, I was sort of blood streaming down my face, which obviously alarmed me. So I just sat there and was like, blood, blood, ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. Um, which given that other people had broken limbs and you know really quite seriously hurt themselves seemed a bit melodramatic So anyway, we went to hospital got stitched up Everybody then went for dinner at the Doenco restaurant in the middle of Vienna in the on the Stephansplatz um, Apart from Toto who unfortunately was um, Hospitalized overnight before having some surgery and anyway this story got recounted and by the end of the evening as Nikki was sitting there hosting um, the whole group of engineers who were all a bit battered and bruised and myself with um, my very serious injury that had a tiny little plaster above my left eye. He was literally tears of laughter rolling down his face. He couldn't speak because he was laughing at me so much. And every time he saw me then for the rest of that season, he would see me and say, Bradley, ambulance, ambulance. And it's that warmth and that Herzlichkeit, that big warm heart that I think we would all miss so very, very much. My name is Ron Meadows. I'm the sporting director. I have very fond memories of Nicky. More often than not, he would call me the old wanker, and I'd call him back the older wanker. But uh, I loved his straightness and how, how blunt he was with his opinions, and he certainly made us a, a better team, and I miss him dearly. He's uh, he was such a legend, and my my history when I was younger, growing up, watching James Hunt and Nicky Lauda race, and getting to work with him was a, was a dream. And, uh, it's a real sad day for us. During, his, during the early days, Nick Nicky was quite keen to let uh, Red Bull have a Mercedes engine. And, uh, and his rationale was that would make us a stronger team to give us stronger competition. And obviously we weren't all keen because we, we, we just wanted the engine for ourselves. And they took some convincing, but in, in, the, in the end he got where we were coming from, which was uh, a challenge. But uh, I also got where he was coming from as well. He's just trying to make us better every day. Hello, um, my name is Stefan Weinhofer. I'm the head of uh, hospitality of the Mercedes Motorhome in Formula One. And my favorite uh, Nikki, sto Nikki story I want to share with you um, was uh, in 2016 when uh, Don't Call, the catering company I'm working for, um, got a contract to take over obviously the catering for Mercedes. Um, and we were hitting to Australia, um, first race in the season. Um, and we knew Nikki will be there, of course. And so we were already quite nervous because Nikki um, was always um, pushing us to the limit um, with his own style and his own way. Yeah? So um, what happened is um, I served him a mozzarella which is one of his favorite dishes um, looked perfectly beautiful five minutes later I got a call and um, the owner of the company sent me pictures through where the plate was completely messed up and there was a fly on it so Nikki did a joke just to again get the full tension and um, push us with his tricks and, 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 and tricks and tweets um, again to the limit, to the highest limit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was the game we played with him, or he played with us. Yeah, um, yeah. and um, he was always around in the motorhome. And each and every Saturday, he had uh, his schnitzel with us. 
I hope it was acceptable, the quality we reached at the end. Um, and we really miss him.